Alright guys, the Edinburgh Festival is fast approaching and you can see myself, Stu and Steve all live there. Where can they find us guys? Monkey Barrel Comedy. Yes, uh, the Carnivore Rooms. All three of us are playing there. What uh, time are you? I'm at one twenty-five. I'm at 5.25. And I'm 5.25, so me and Stu clash a wee bit. So you can either watch a bit of Stu's show and get, then come and see me. Get Airbnb, stay two nights, see us. Yes, back to do back. just see us. And you can days. see me twice, uh, one each day, if you, you want. You can go to, go to him every day if you want. Steve's yeah. only doing 10 days, so, you know. 4th to the 14th. Yeah. But this is it. As on these mugs, Monkey Barrel Comedy is a venue, and the tickets are available and on the Ed Fringe website. Uh, mm. They don't have an app this year pricks famously <laughs> so uh you won't be able to just search the nearby now thing and find us so please buy tickets in advance because we fucking will need it yep. and and the link to all of our shows will be in the description below so hopefully we'll see you at this year's festival and in the meantime enjoy today's episode enjoy welcome to the some laugh podcast it could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was, there was just some was laughs. Some laughs. Well, no be. promise in all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. So you obviously, Steve, have subsequently gone viral again since we last spoke. It's happening all the time now, guys, isn't it? <laughs> Weird, you know, eagle-eared listeners uh, who listened two episodes back will remember yes. you talking about uh, old El Paso Vita kits and stuff yeah. like that. Yep. Um, Arguably that How come I knew some lines from the video before it came out? How does that work? <laughs> that spurred me on. That little chat spurred me on to maybe make a sketch because we've spoke about it before, me yeah. and you, Jennings. Uh, and it's like burning your old material. People put out clips of their old stand-up videos. Yeah. I just put it in a different format, put it in a sketch mm. format. Yeah. And it, what do you I've think actually... next to the old El Paso book? Novel? Yeah. yeah. Big time. Recipe book. <laughs> <laughs> I like how in this the, like you know in the last couple of weeks you went from W H Smith guy now you're the fajita kit by yeah. what's, what's next, next for Stephen yeah. Buchanan <laughs> who am I taking down next shredded wheat uh, <laughs> did you ever get that mark, bit working mark my words what? did you ever get that bit working I, I fucking crammed it into another bit that worked I like, sandwiched it really fucked it into this bit and it kind of worked just fucking <laughs> flattening it into this it. bit yeah. me and Steve used to meet up to write like once a week yeah. for about a year and I'd have I'm, you know I'm trying out all these new bits and, yeah. and every week Steve would just be like I just can't get the shredded wheat bit working <laughs> and we're just like getting under the hood of the shredded wheat bit that just was every quite week. a cursed joke it yeah. just... Stu's done like three hours because <laughs> <Aye. laughs> was, you would always come with like pure pages and pages of all this <laughs> these new premises yeah. and all that and I'd be like I'd have the shredded wheat but I would come in with premises like the world's a fucked up place guys yeah, and the, every one of Steve's jokes to begin with has the, the scaffolding premise of Guys, the world's a fucked up. <laughs> Shredded weight is doing big numbers. <laughs> you know, it is hard to be stand up though because I've even got a couple of bits in the wall that I've been working on for ages and like, it, like the certain bits that I've been working on for years and I keep going back to and back to and you never got. And honestly, you waste so much time that yeah. you probably could get like a whole fucking hours yeah. show done yeah. on something else. But sometimes when you just think there's something in a there's bit, something in that thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're talking about this. It? We're talking about this new. But I mean, by the time we put this out, Steel have probably had about ten million views off the yeah. back of <laughs> when shredded the <laughs> guy who invented shredded wheat. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going for. That's my that's my next video. I say it's a good idea. You know it probably would work better as a sketch. Yeah. Yeah, we should workshop it live on yeah. pod and then yeah you film it and then next week we'll, we'll <laughs> analyse it like it's match uh, of the day I think really the thing would be <laughs> the meeting where the shredded feet people figure out the mnemonic the mnemonic mm -hmm. of, yeah uh, guys, do you, have you heard what people are saying? That's my <laughs> plan. That was, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Either like a phone call or like a meeting. It's like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? That they're saying never eat shredded wheat. And then he starts saying it himself something. That, guys, this... And then the listeners are in on this now. They can, yeah. they can workshop the it with us. the comedic mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real peek, peek behind the curtain. Peek behind the curtain here. See the master at work. <laughs> <laughs> but Which, that's, that's what they call me. They yeah. Have, yeah. We, have we spoke about that? I don't think the so. master. No. I got a nickname uh, on the circuit as the master, which isn't because like I'm good at stand up or anything. It was basically because people thought you were under sixteen. Yeah, they, they thought I wasn't <laughs> old enough to be a mister. Yeah. Uh, now basically, I was on doing this new material night, and the compare 
Trip here tries to oversell everyone. Pure like, shite Tuesday night open yeah, mic. Yeah, well. there's there's like maybe th- four people in or something, and this guy's giving me this huge big intro, and he's just saying shit that's not even true. The you guy's know? panicking. He's really panicking because he's just <laughs> wanting people to get the energy up, and he's like, "Yeah, this guy, he's amazing. You're gonna love him. He's the master of comedy." And then as soon as he said that, you could his face kind of went dropped, and he was like. Why did I say that? <laughs> and then he, but he continued and he was like, it's Stephen Buchanan. And then I walked on and I was like, come on, guys. It's the, the master of comedy is here. You can all settle down now. And I wasn't headlining that night. Mark Nelson was headlining. Mm, yeah. And you could tell that he, he went on after. He was raging. He was like, <laughs> oh, I have to follow the master of comedy and I'm the one headlining. I'm the apprentice to the master. That's funny. That's very you to get a nickname that's come on by accident by yeah. accident yeah <laughs> grossly oversells you but then some people have heard that through the grapevine don't know that story and then I've just assumed that people think I'm this fucking Jedi of <laughs> comedy <laughs> I've had my open spots been like oh yeah he, the oh, ultimate that's the comedian's <laughs> comedian <laughs> and now it's became a self-fulfilling prophecy <laughs> 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 that gigs. Steve once heard a guy tell a joke so shite it made him physically sick. <laughs> that is true, yeah. Basically, I was, I had this horrible cough at the time. I had yeah. rice lung at the yeah. time, which we were calling it. Which I just had that. I think it was like whooping cough or some medieval disease that doesn't exist anymore. But I, for months, I had this fucked chest and cough and stuff, mm. and I was constantly coughing. And this guy told it. A, a joke so bad that put me into a coughing frenzy because uh, I was laughing and wheezing and coughing so much that I physically ran to the toilet and sprayed sick through my <laughs> through my fingers. Now, Steve, a lot of people are going to be listening to this and going, can it be that bad a joke if it made you laugh that much? Yeah, yeah but it, this we all know who this guy is. We're not going to say who it is. <laughs> it's a pretty bad joke. It does these like one-liners and... Kind of uh, deliberately cheesy one-liners. Deliberately bad I think what you might I call hope. a groaner, yes, but not a vomiter, not a vomiter, <laughs> <laughs> no. And I was sick, which is good. I mean, fair play. <laughs> He's done his job. He laugh. got a reaction. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So obviously, uh, you know, the videos been going well and stuff like that, but it's not been all good news, has it, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> you get the odd message with with the you newfound attention. You get love, but you also get hate. You get a lot of love, and then you get a wee bit of hate. And you always fixate on the hate, don't you? And you get the odd person who's like, oh, this is this isn't funny. And then you go, right, we block them, move on. Do you want to, do you want to know a comment I seen that was hateful about you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't even hateful, but I just thought it was interesting because it was one of the first ones I've seen and it just went, it actually was nice because it said, oh, look at what Lemmy spawned. But I love it or something. It was something like that. But like it's a kinda, backhanded one. Yeah. Mm. No, it was, it was like, oh, I like it, but it was funny that people see a Scottish person and just yeah. and they go oh he's just trying to be like this other Scottish person who I've Aye. heard of because I've only heard of three Scottish people Aye. ever exactly that, that are you know Cause that has nothing to do with me. exactly because like these like the format of these sketches I've been doing recently isn't like what Lemmy does. He does like these sort of. There's other people you're weird... ripping off way more than that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not name names. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, is that comment, I've had that like two or three times, and I've always been like, "There's nothing like Lemmy." I, I would love yeah. to be like Lemmy. I think he's fucking amazing. He's so funny. Right. But it's like, it's like a lot more. He's that's what makes him a weird person to compare anyone to because he's so unique. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think the reason maybe is because because he obviously done vines back in the day, which was a Aye. sort of a primitive form almost now of the sort of videos that you're doing and that everybody does now, the TikToks and all that. Yeah. But and nobody was really doing it back then, and because there's still no really that many prominent Scottish people that do it, um, other than a few exceptions like. People, he's still the go-to reference. Yeah. So when people still see, it's like when you do stand up and people, say you know, Kevin Bridges or Frankie, Frankie or whatever, and like, because there's only like two people that they know and they don't yeah. realise there's and like they, a million and comics in the circuit. Bridges and, and Frankie would have got Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly, they fucking always get Billy Connolly. And it's yeah. fair fucking forty years before, <laughs> you know, he was starting or whatever. So yeah, I just kind of start doing sketches now because then they'll say I'm ripping off you. <laughs> like, I fucking wrote that shredded wheat bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a workshop so done for that. That's the stage I want to get to where people are like, oh, he's just doing a Steve B over there. What the fuck? That's it. Play Try to copy the master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you've had weird comments and shit. So you get weird ones. So you get the odd one like that, like, oh, 
who's this guy trying to be Lemmy? And you're like, I mean, I would love to be Lemmy, but these videos aren't like what Lemmy does at all. No. And so in a way, as a compliment, because I'm like, I fucking love Lemmy and he's mm. great. Uh, but <laughs> so I done a video like a few weeks ago about Craig David. Um, you never want to shy away from the big topics, are you? Yeah, very relevant. <laughs> Very relevant, and I'm going to quote. And be, why did people not accuse you of ripping off Avid Marion? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. selector. Because on one of the videos, it was on on that video where someone said about Lemmy. I was like, "Fucking both selected on it <laughs> well before that." Um, but yeah, I didn't do any jokes in both selector guys. I, I like to think it was a lot more highbrow than You're that. Above that, you know. <laughs> I used to like both selector, but so yeah, I had the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah the that video was about basically the premise is Craig David workshops seven days the song seven days with his producer yeah and it's me going through an alternative version of reality where mm. Craig David his week isn't all about shagging and it's about going to the cinema going bowling blah 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 mm. but the producer keeps suggesting that you should say shagging and you know the, the rest is history. <laughs> I got a comment. I got a fucking comment off the back of that video. It's not even a comment, sorry. A, a DM. Someone slid into my DMs. <laughs> I'm not going to name their name or anything, but it was on Instagram. If you're Worth listening. pointing out, this this message is not from Craig David. No, I wish. That would make some element of sense. I got a comment from the guy who produced Seven Days. Really? Did you? Mark Hill, I think he's called. What did he say? How did you know that this is I love He said this is exactly how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's, that's great. That's funny. That's really good. He commented on my TikTok ad, my Instagram, so really? Good lad. Really try to piggyback off my success, but uh. <laughs> so you get all the hangers on and all that sort of stuff. You're yes, man. Just remember who was with you before you had all this exactly. fucking viral success, all right? Some laugh is that you've been my day ones <laughs> from four weeks ago. <laughs> I'm really glad that we managed to start this podcast before you got too big for it. <laughs> yeah. I think we must have started making this podcast the same time that I started putting out sketches. I think that was it kind of coincided. Yeah. So you, you got in at the mm, right time, absolutely. guys. Buy low, sell high. <laughs> <laughs> so this message, right, a completely unhinged message. I don't quite know what she was getting at. So she obviously misunderstood what the sketch was about, right? Yeah. She's just DM'd me at um, 2.23 a.m. So Good I'm thinking she's probably steaming. Or not from this country, maybe? Mm, maybe. Well, what was her name again? Seems like That's a pretty it. British name. She's fucking, she's British. All right, fucking yeah. Greg's over here. <laughs> <laughs> Checks out, right? Okay. She doesn't seem Spanish or something is what I'm trying right. to say. Well, um, Spain has the same time zone as us, but <laughs> I was mean like America or some shit, do you know what I mean? Oh, like... well, it could be American, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spain? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, do I? Right, I'll read you the message. This is at 2.23am. She said, <laughs> You have a cheek thinking any woman would shag you once. Never mind choose and weds. <laughs> Question, uh, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. She's got a point, to be fair. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you her? <laughs> Have you created this account? <laughs> then she goes on to say, You seem like a closeted narcissist hiding behind other people's song lyrics. Dot, 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 dot. Then five minutes later, so she's had time to think. Yep. Sure. She said, try me. Dot 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 dot. <laughs> Ill at you. No probs in song lyrics. Don't try making a dick out of me. That's the bit that really freaks my nut. Is don't try making a dick out of me. I know. I'm really shouting it now in case she <laughs> in case she thinks I'm making a dick out of her now. Well, How that's... can she watch that and think it's about her? About her in any way? Yeah. No, I don't. You've th- not said anything to. Her. I don't think she thinks it's about her. I think she's like, don't mention that I've. I've messaged you now. Don't do what you just did there. Yeah, don't yeah. don't do don't go on your podcast and talk <laughs> and talk about, about this. It. Yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. not messaged back. I was no, I wouldn't. I would just leave it. Do you think yeah. just nothing good's coming? From what are you going to say? Take a leaf out of Lemmy's book and block and move on. I think that's a good. Yeah. That is a good. Uh, Bamo. Bamo. Bamo block and move on. Because the thing is, like, yeah, like you say, I think she. Because the whole thing is. You know, you're talking about shagging and you and the thing of being Craig David and the whole idea is, you know, obviously that they're pitching to him that you should talk about shagging all the time. So she must have, like, 
had to ignore so much of the context of yeah. that thing. Mm-hmm. But she knows it's about lyrics. So does she think you're trying to improve the song? I don't know. You've a, no, because she said you have a cheek thinking any woman would shag you once. Never mind Tuesday and Wednesday. So there's the first mistake. She thinks you're crazy. Tuesday David. went for a drink, Wednesday shagging, yeah. So she's fucked up that. <laughs> Straight away, I didn't say she's I was lost all credibility. There. She's lost Straight all away. credibility. I also That's like the fact she says court. she's like, ah, look, and see if someone was to shag you on the off chance, <laughs> there's no way it'd be two nights in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a Monday, but not not a Tuesday or a Wednesday. I know, but what, just what would bring someone to message you that is insane, isn't it? <laughs> so mental. And then it's yeah, you seem like a closeted narcissist hiding behind other people's song lyrics. So she knows that Wouldn't I was say talking closeted. about. Yeah, I'm full scale narcissist. I'm, I'm out. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm fully out. You don't out. become viral by being closeted. No. <laughs> you put yourself out then. But it's, so she does know that I'm talking about a song. But yeah. yeah. She also thinks that I'm. Does she think it's my song? No, she says other people's Other people's song. lyrics. No part of it makes any yeah. sense. Yeah. So she's saying you won't get your hole off women and you're a narcissist for hiding behind people's song lyrics. Mm-hmm. Well, these are just, you <laughs> know. Crazy. This is just the collateral damage that you need to get used to now that you're yeah. a star. She got it spot on as well. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. You know, the truth shines through. And <laughs> she obviously has read between the lines of that sketch and seen the real you underneath the <laughs> character. <laughs> Behind Craig David and his producer. <laughs> What's going on? I know what this fajita video is really about. <laughs> you get a lot of like, bootlickers for companies as well though that's really weird yeah like oh don't don't say this about old el paso <laughs> i i love old el paso it's like what if what are you getting out of this <laughs> it's insane and the old el paso themselves actually changed their name yeah to one of the lines in your video that you was gave a success them, gave them license to be a banter company yeah they're one sure of they, these... we can take a laugh yeah we actually. can take a laugh actually. we're not a stick in the mud here at old el paso really the, <laughs> really the fucking see it was seething yeah. though i could tell that he was like oh no, you get some free kits uh no you should no, I really should. Have, I they could changed get some their, sort of money. have they changed their name back from Spicy Dust or whatever? I'm not sure, but I'm looking out for when that's going <laughs> when to happen. It. It's like after Pride Month and they all change their logos <laughs> back to the normal one. <laughs> <laughs> this is Spicy Dust Month. <laughs> Old El Paso. <laughs> here at Old El Paso, we're here to listen. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry that you had just had too many products. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was a good success for me because we spoke about that a few weeks ago where the CEO was in the, the audience. And now, wonder if he he's seen it and has been like, "That's that we fucking prick for the guy comedy still show." Still doing that shit <laughs> three years later. <laughs> Whole pandemic's come and gone, and he's still fucking mouthing off about. <laughs> but show it is weird that how when you put it into a sketch form that it does kind of pop off because I yeah. put that exact clip of me doing the doing stand up about it like last year and it got like a hundred likes and then I do it in a sketch form and it's you know mm. well as someone who's just about to put out some stand up clips uh that is quite depressing but it's true. <laughs> it is true that like No but sometimes you do get big stand up clips that pop off as well. I know although I've I've found it tends the ones that do the best for some reason it's always the heckler ones or just you yeah. doing with the audience. Yeah. Um, but we'll see, I don't know, I've got a couple of clips to promote the but you, show. You've had your own su- viral success in the past, Mark. Stu's the only one without viral success here. Yeah, I'm not chasing it. Oh, well, <laughs> you say that, but let's just see you. Fucking couple more TikTok clips or some laugh and fucking <laughs> yeah. Stu will be... Yeah. One day on I'll own. go on the TikTok and see even what's on there. <laughs> <laughs> People have said that to me, oh, a few of them are doing good on TikTok, I didn't even know we were on TikTok. Really. <laughs> That's good. We need someone who's fucking... I'm the boomer of the group. No, you, you just need, we need someone who's sober, who's, who's not getting drunk on the fucking validation of social media. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're you're still very much traditional media, aren't you? You're on yeah. Scott Squad. I'm a, I'm a TV radio guy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm old school, man. We are trying to come up in the world mm. through social media. You're, and that's that's someone who is a cast member you. in a radio series I'm producing. <laughs> 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 yes. But you've had your own success, Mark, back on Facebook. Yeah, no, it's a shame because, like, Facebook's still where I've got most of my followers and, like, you know, it's a shame that it's became a graveyard for... I don't even know how to work Facebook anymore. It's so confusing when I go on it. It takes me ages to find my comedian page. Yeah, it's hard. But there's a a link between Facebook and Insta, isn't it, that Reels can share over 
So does it work the same way if you put it on Facebook? Does it go on Insta? No. So sometimes I'll just put it on both. Right. But sometimes Instagram will take your reel and put and start showing it on Facebook. But then it doesn't even really... Well, it's not as if you then get loads of follows on Instagram and you don't get right. them on Facebook. So it's kind of pointless. It just sort of goes into the void. Right. Um, I would. Mu- it's a bit like currency, I think, like uh, the followers. And it's like, so the currency of TikTok at the moment anyway, it's like, you know, it's like having a lot of money and fucking, you know, some shit currency basically. And then, you know, I think probably the highest one would maybe be like having YouTube subscribers. Thanks very much to everyone who's subscribed to someone. <laughs> yes. uh, YouTube and then like, I don't know, maybe Twitter and Instagram, somewhere that you can sell tickets. But Facebook, to be honest, is actually quite good for selling tickets. I'm still yeah. able to shift them, but obviously it's an older demographic and I would... I would, oh, that, those are the people with money the people who go on Facebook this is Instagram. true actually so people on TikTok don't have money no because they're like fucking they also don't need any more fucking old. entertainment if they're on TikTok well this just is very day. true that's true um, but that's I would true. much rather like have I'd, I wish I had a bigger Instagram or Twitter following or something like that I'll probably I'll need to start doing some fucking videos about tortillas or something <laughs> yeah you could do uh, I liked your response to it you, were, you saw the Wagaman <laughs> yeah I was kit. just in Tesco and I seen it it was like a katsu curry <laughs> kit Imagine I just did like I didn't mention it to Verbatim. anyone. Just yeah, exactly. Ch- change it to just a ask chicken, fucking panko breadcrumbs, you know, whatever. <laughs> Plane ticket to Japan. Because <laughs> I think because we kind of we've been mistaken for each other before. People mm. might just think it's me doing the video. See, again. Like, I liked his old El Paso one, but he's lost it, man. He's to, <laughs> just fucking trying to rehash out the same it, shit. It's not yeah. the same. Do you know what? It's an interesting thing, right? Uh, like, because obviously we need to live on social media now. We need to promote ourselves on there and stuff like that. But obviously, you know, a lot of people concerned about you know data harvesting and stuff like that. Sometimes it's hard not to just see everything you post on social media as a way to work for a social media company and give them free, you know, fucking free content basically. Um, and then it just helps their algorithm and makes them all, you know, earn money from advertising and stuff. Um, there is an argument. To say that apparently data, even though they can harvest data and stuff like that, it's not actually as, um, you know, it's not as successful in actually finding out as much information about you and advertising to people as folk used to think. And it's a bit of a sort of, like nobody really knows how many, you know, how, how much you can really advertise online and how well Google ads work and all these type of things. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it is weird because you just think like, Say if there was a fucking revolution or something, there's no way that they wouldn't be able to just find you instantly. Mm-hmm. To the point where various different companies, I was thinking about this the other day, like, I'm walking about my phone, there's various different companies all tracking me at the same time. Yeah. Like, at most, see whenever I'm driving home, even when I know it's not even like that long a journey, see because I've got my phone in the uh, car, I'll just put my Google Maps thing just to see if there's any traffic or something usually yeah but then that just knows where the fuck i'm going Aye. but then apple must know where i'm going even anyway, without I'm, google maps i will know yeah. and it'll be tracking it anyway yeah and i'm like i wonder which company knows the most about me Aye. you get you know google apple facebook fucking twitter you know whatever. Pornhub. Pornhub. Dare I say, Dare I say Pornhub. <laughs> I don't know. They could, can they find I mean, out your data if you go on an incognito I, window? Is yeah. <laughs> if you're going on Pornhub and you're, when you're driving in your it's car. jacking off on the MS. It's, a, it? it's a bit fucked, man. You've got a problem. <laughs> 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 you need to stop in the hard shoulder at the very least for that. Yeah. <laughs> Shoulders no thing, it's harder to do that much. Hey, come on. <laughs> but what, what do you, like, would you, would you just like to give up, so, or do you think he's... I'd love to give up social media. Aye. Yeah, so would I. But the nature of our job is to be on. We have to be there's, on social media. There's a thing that I was uh, reading today, actually, and it's, like, it talks about post and ghost, which I think is actually a really good way to go about it. So see, like, like when you post your videos and all that, and then it's hard not to just kind of constantly keep, all day look at the see how the reactions is going and stuff like that. But I think it'd be more healthy if you just... You know, because obviously you do need to use it for posts and stuff, but once you do it, just yeah. shut it off and move on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I actually see one of these Instagram infographic things today, and it's like, don't post and ghost because you stay on the app and then interact. And, but, but it's one of these mad things. It's like they want engagement. You to stay on their fucking app, but I wonder if that is true, whether they would like, you know. Well, that's what TikTok as well is looking at the analytics bit, and it was like, oh, this video wasn't doing as well as this because 
you're not like if people comment on it you need to comment back and get them to engage and specifically ask people to comment and share with their pals and all that and you're like so oh, thanks so much for saying that i'm fucking i've got a brass neck to even say one woman would shag me you know like yeah thank, <laughs> thank you so much for the engagement <laughs> I, and because the thing I, I agree with that i would love to post and ghost and then like yeah because it, it kind of does fuck you mentally you're like this yeah. is insane even if people are like dead being dead positive it's like you know, you're no longer a, a closet, a closeted narcissist. You're like, yes, I'm the best cunt in the world. <laughs> Absolutely. You know I mean? Also, just takes up all your day. It takes up all your day as well. Also, if there's negative stuff, I'm so thin skinned. <laughs> it's unreal. Yeah, you should cut that out because then people are going to target you. <laughs> <laughs> you can really Please get don't this target guy. me. I am so thin skinned. I get same. one. Steve's comment. skin is a lot like an old El Paso <laughs> 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 rap. <laughs> a rap from one of the fight, I guess. I'm just a, a backbone, <laughs> a sense of self. I'm honestly one wee comment would fuck my day, man. Like it's yeah. it's horrible. Like, I've been That's reading, why I don't put much stuff out. Like. I've been reading that comment for for like constantly over and over. Like, what the fuck does this mean? I've got quite a. Uh, I think by the by the time this goes out, I'll it'll be the following week for a post. But I've got a quite controversial bit. I think of stand up that I'm going to put out. Yeah, and I am. So I gear myself up. <laughs> no, it's the opposite actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'm gearing myself up for a bit of like I know people are gonna hate it and I'm and I think I'm gonna need to just try and avoid I don't think they'll stuff. hate it. You know a certain you can stand by the bit. might not like it. Yeah, but I think I might get some, you know, vitriol for it and I'm just like But you're on the right side of history. Well Mark. that's that hopefully we'll see. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> But um, <laughs> no, but it is. It's it's, it's just bad for it. But again, it's it's one of those ones that we just wanted yeah. to deal with. Mm. I feel Do like you want to say what the bit is now. No. You're going to keep it a surprise. No, because I won't. I wouldn't have put it out by by then. Yeah. I need to make some kind of ver- verbal pledge to the listeners or something I'm going to achieve in the next couple of weeks as well. Like We've all got stuff to look forward to. Yeah, I've got we've trailed in the pod. You've got that bit. I oh no, actually, well, I now. think I will have put it out by next week. I will have done. So there you go. By now we'll see whether or not I've been killed. <laughs> I'll have received death threats. Good for the numbers. Well, it's a bit that you do in stand-up, isn't it? Yes. In your current set. So uh-huh. Do you want to... No, you don't want to talk to it. Don't burn it here. We'll wait and we'll see how the reaction is and then yeah. we'll talk about then it we'll next talk time. about it when it's a viral yeah. sensation. Or not and no one gives a fuck. <laughs> uh, which is probably what will happen, but... You could put out clips from Scott Squad and that. Is that a, I don't a, know about the legalities of that. You're in, yeah. with the, you're in with the bricks over there. Are the good people <laughs> of not a phrase comedy unit. No? Uh, you know I heard the phrase in now. with the bricks? No, I've never heard that. Really? No. What does that mean? Is that a Glasgow thing? No, I don't think so. Just me being ignorant. Yeah. It's literally, I don't know like, the like, phrase. I've with the bricks, my feet under the desk. It's I'm, literally I'm the same there. as like part of the furniture. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you are a big part of that. Mm. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I'll get I'll get you to talk to them. You can be my intermediary. <laughs> I can't be asked. Yeah, I mean, I knew I do need to do something to shift tickets. I was thinking of maybe put more clips out or something like that, and B sides and rarities and stuff that's not made the fringe show. No, it is funny because like you are like a producer, a story writer for uh, a story producer, editor, yeah. producer yeah. for Scott Squad, and like sometimes we'll like submit stories and stuff to you, and because yeah. we're basically our boss. I'm their boss. Yeah, <laughs> there's a weird dynamic because I'll always like try and slip in one where your character has a cousin who visits, <laughs> and it's clearly me trying to write myself in, yeah, and it never gets picked up. So yeah. I'm just putting that out there mm. for you, man. Doing his identical twin brother <laughs> <laughs> with a different accent, a Glasgow <laughs> accent. <laughs> um. Yeah, but to, to return to something you kind of were alluding to there, but I do like it when the algorithm just gets you wrong. Like that right. always feels like a victory for the little guy. Like I'm never done getting pizza ovens recommended to me, and I'm like I'm flattered. You think I could afford You'd love and a house? Pizza oven. I would, but <laughs> like Instagram's not seen my flat, you know, and how we've not got a garden. Like what the fuck am I doing? My pizza oven is that it's how like you two know grand or something? That they, they don't actually know everything. Yeah. No, like and there's a thing you, you there's a tab you can click on your profile on Instagram where it tells you like all the data they've got on you. Really? And it's got like yeah, that might be quite fun to do actually. It's got like all the the topics you're supposed to be interested in, hey. and a lot of them are like <laughs> where is a lot of them are me, but then some of them it's like you know volleyball or something. You're like yeah, I've never even said that word. Yeah, mm, sure. <laughs> it's just constant volleyball. You're, you're big volleyball. Which guys. is why I think all this stuff about AI and all that and it becoming sentient and all this shit, I think it's such a lot of shit and it's never going to happen because there's just, they can get all this data on you, but there's just, 
it is really all just algorithms and stuff so they're mm-hmm. never going to get to the point that like you know it can really have artificial intelligence in the you know the way that we you know you know it's spoken about i just think it's fucking a lot of bullshit and everybody who talks about it is can play this clip when that does happen i in like two weeks years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i just I, I, I think we're far away for that so what it says yeah. you can look at your yeah i can't remember exactly how you do it i remember yes. everyone doing it like a year ago or something like that your activity is that that Oh yeah, here we go. So ad interests. So if you go on, advertisers can reach you based on interest categories. We add you to these categories based on information that you've provided and your activity. My first one, do you want to guess? Uh, I'm going to say football. Um, what? What's the question? What do you think my top <laughs> interest is? Uh, volleyball. Well, the correct answer, according to Instagram, is rodeo. <laughs> well, but literally, like... I don't like any of this stuff. Pearl Jam, recreational fishing, <laughs> ethical consumerism to a degree i suppose but not really nba finals mac demarco ellie golding dkny max mara it's just all complete uh, shite well you had rodeo as your top yeah interest for advertisers my top interest is disco <laughs> <laughs> i'm more into disco than rodeo How, so, where do you find it here's here's my ones right i'll read it then disco dolce and gabbana data science cooking ebook readers Whole Food Markets, Porsche Street Photography, Female Entrepreneur Association, Luxury Vehicle, Dick Sporting Goods, I generally didn't think you've got in the UK, Dicks? Karma Yoga, Sprint Brackets Running, ah, right. Golf Club in Cube de France, and they say, oh by Very the way, surprise for one you. of them is the Bundesliga 2. <laughs> <laughs> That's some real hipster football app. Absolutely. Oh, I think they've got mines mixed up with yours too. Rodeo? No. We're not fucking rodeo pros, are we? No, but this is genuinely stuff that you might be interested in. Oh, yeah. PGA European Tour. I like golf. Uh, TJ Maxx. TK Maxx. You like TK? Fucking never out of TK Maxx. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. Sure, why not? <laughs> Pop music. Yeah. Improv. I'm Pride. Doing that tonight. Sure. <laughs> Ferrari. The nah. Lumineers. You love the I Lumineers. I fucking hate the Lumineers. <laughs> but... Do you have uh, Old El Paso anywhere in your Stevie? <laughs> no. No. Maybe not that I can see. There's a there's a mad section here that I lists... do have Nestle pet care though. Mm. Don't know Nestle. I work. smell a video. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a mad section here that says uh, the Bahamas, Jerry Seinfeld, <laughs> Garden, Blackburn Rovers FC, and Jimmy Choo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, it's a lot of shite. They don't know what they're playing at. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. though. it's like I. But don't then you will think... get like an advert for some shit that you have just spoke about or something. And like it that, does, which yeah, is creepy. Immediately. I th- yeah, well, I, but I think really that's to do with your card, does not it? Because they must have is access to your is, bank details, and then because it's literally Aye. like you buy fucking coffee, and then it comes up mm-hmm. like in- next Instagram advert you see is Nescafe or whatever. I don't yeah. want to go full Matt Letizia, but I am pretty sure that it, like it hears what you're saying. Like, yeah, I, I was eating so. Maltesers the other night. I was talking about eating Maltesers because I was eating Maltesers. I go on Instagram. They're advertising Maltesers. Maltesers. But I always think you're too late. I'm already eating fucking Maltesers. What are you doing? Eat more Maltesers. Yeah. Well, we, get another bag. Yeah. I had the same. Uh, I was actually one time when I was just talking about coffee. I was like, I think I was saying, oh, we ran out of coffee, and then it comes up with the coffee yeah. advert, and it probably will fucking happen again. Yeah. Uh, It'll be on all three of us right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't drink coffee, so it's wasted. They've yeah. wasted money on it. But I, I, even sometimes I'm kind of down the Matlatizzi route as well like, I think even sometimes when you think something it'll fucking pop up one time this is no lie there was a UPS truck outside my house not even coming to my house like mm-hmm. a neighbour and then I was just constantly getting hunters of UPS adverts and shit I don't know how how the fuck do they know that you, I didn't mention it though I didn't mention UPS do you want your just seen it with maybe my it's eyes. like because they, they know your truck? location and, and the then they location of the truck and they know it's so Maybe. then they put two and two together. Maybe, yeah. But it wasn't going to Hot my Hot UPS house. in your area. <laughs> yeah. My Matt Letizia style, style take <laughs> on this is I actually think one. I actually think it's interesting how those algorithms work like that because actually I sort of think that's how the mind works and how actually our thoughts have a similar power in terms of attracting things. I know he got all the secrets. So some whatever, galaxy brain shit. This. But I do sort <laughs> of believe. I th- I believe that like our thoughts have more power than we necessarily know about. And it's like those just those weird coincidences, like you're thinking of someone and then they telephone you. Yeah. The one I always like, we always joke about whenever we're driving is like I can always get a parking spot. Ah, uh, you 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 <laughs> like your um, 
Is it positive mental attitude? It's the visualization. Other people are visualizing like becoming a world best selling author or something. <laughs> You're just visualizing a fucking parking spot next to the stand. That is genuinely the thing because we always do that. It's like I always got a parking space. Don't worry. I was like, how is like visualization? Mate? I always visualize a parking spot. Have you ever one. failed to get a parking spot when I you've been in my motor? No. Exactly. What am I saying? Fair. Honestly, it's, it is kind of amazing. But see, Quite that's because just... it's always like the disabled parking bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my grand's blue badge, like, yeah, you know. I'm Mrs. Blake, you know. <laughs> but generally, and that's a kind of trivial example of it, but I think there's something to that sort of, you know, the, these the serendipitous kind of things that happen in life. Yeah. And I think basically the way that the algorithm works almost mimics actually how that happens because you know the mm. amount of times you, you like you know you're going oh there's someone's the top, top, top people in your feed or things come up yeah. when you've not even necessarily said it but you've been thinking it and it's that powerful and I I genuinely do think that that's how the world works because how often are you thinking about somebody you know thought about for ages and then you see them yeah. and things yeah. those type of things happen all the time and I'm a believer in that I think we don't you know, I, I just think our thoughts are more powerful than we realise. That's it. I don't think yeah. there's anything too airy fairy about it. If I was being, I actually think there's probably a way that science could figure out what that is. They just haven't done it yet. But I genuinely think that that is a thing. And you know, but, so it's not like the secret. Like, just think something will happen. But definitely having yeah, it's like got your some thoughts, sort of power. your thoughts affect everything else. Because you, you know, your actions start with a thought and all the rest of it. And sometimes the thoughts can lead to just fucking. I don't know, it's like we're fucking like, ma- we're like walking magnets, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy if you ever smoked DMT. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a minute ago you were saying you don't think AI and shit is real or could exist. I, do you not think, if you think these That's algorithms have the power to have like this similar thing of thoughts i'm not saying they're more i'm not saying that they're not powerful i'm just saying that it's interesting how the algorithm works in a similar way to thoughts how the you know the the super conscious as it's called works Mm, i think yeah Mm. it's interesting it's interesting and i got no further comments on it (laughs) You don't, do, you th- do you think that could happen? This is above my pay grade, man. Because we were going to do, we usually do a philosophy question. One of it was going to be fate. Kind of, do you mm. think it ties into that? A Let's get back to that later on. Let's lighten the mood a wee bit, I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, we didn't darken it that much. No, no, I think it's been a pretty light conversation, but maybe yeah. we should. Fun and flirty. We've got a few other things we want to cover. Um, Stu, Stu, you were back in your hometown recently. Well, not quite my hometown, but no. I was, uh, yeah, I was back into Fermlin, the yes. ancient capital. Mm. Scotland's newest city. You're a big Dunfermline fan. Wouldn't say big. I am a Paz fan. Though. You're a yeah. fan. <laughs> uh, my family from there originally, but I, I'm a proud fifer, of course, from yes. the kingdom. But yeah, no, I was back uh, supporting Larry Dean on tour, which was very fun. How very was lovely. it? Good. Yeah, great, really fun. But uh, it was my pal's birthday, and he, we were going out in Glasgow. It's amazing how quickly you go from like five hundred people hanging off your every word to just being a cunt drinking cans on the on the bus back yeah. to Glasgow, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, so it's like, you know, big gig for me and everything, loads of fun. But then, like, later that night, just get trashed and do karaoke. And it's just funny how far you come where, like, you start off really nervous and stand up. And then suddenly there's, like, 500 people, you're not nervous. Mm. But then I've never done karaoke before, and I did karaoke to about six people. And that was horrendous. That's you know, like, petrifying. Shaking Are you guys, like, like that. do you do karaoke? What is... I do, and we'll go into that. But I want to know what song you sung first. Though. Well, because it was like it was like a private booth thing, right. so we were all kind of just doing loads of duets. So it was just you and like your that. mates in this just, place, just pals and that, yeah. So some real fucking stinkers. Me and Ben steaming try to do "Don't Go Breaking My Heart." They uh, yeah. Elton John and Kiki D. It's a classic. But we duet. were too pissed, so we picked the wrong version. It was like some RuPaul version. Aye. So we were trying to sing a different version to a song that we know. <laughs> Probably one of the worst live performances of anything That's of all funny, time. Man. Uh, what else do we do? Natalie and Brulia, Oh, classic. Uh, Great one. A lot of Robbie. A lot of Robbie mm. Williams. Robbie's a go to for me. Classic, that that yeah. is my one. So, my sort of party piece in my head, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I, you're known for. Right? I don't know if anyone really you likes You should release me doing a clip this. of this, Mark. <laughs> I, I like to do in karaoke, I like to go and do Robbie Williams' Angels, mm. but in a Scottish accent. <laughs> so, it's like 
Thoughts running through my head and I feel like love is dead. Jerry Cinnamon covering angels. I'm yeah. loving angels instead. And like, in my head, I'm like an old guy that's up there and like the whole idea is like, oh, I'm like singing about my wife that's left me and I'm like, ah, oh, come back, Maggie. You know, and somebody's like, <laughs> I remember being in piece. Cosmopol, I would do that. It's quite avant-garde. <laughs> but then I just sort of feel like, kind of no one's really in on the joke. And I remember doing that and then like, people just go hang that that is me <laughs> I guess I don't know <laughs> I was just like why is this guy doing it um, it's quite funny that in your stand up you're very good at you know making it very accessible for people and it's like it's good it's not hack but it's accessible everyone's in on the joke but when it comes to karaoke you're a real comedian's comedian <laughs> not really setting up the bit you know yeah. it's a real niche thing man. if they karaoke. get it they get it yeah 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 I tell you my, my mate for school done a brilliant one once and it's like he goes up and does a fucking uh, hero by Enrique Iglesias but he does it like in a Spanish accent so like, that's funny. I can be your hero and he does it like, so like so straight <laughs> in the line the he commits to it and it was I remember he done it in the local but I think he does it quite a lot still but like I remember seeing him years ago doing it in the local and it was fucking hilarious it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen like he was just so brilliant at it um, more recently I did do karaoke um, I was, so I was in Cardiff uh, I was doing the Glee in Cardiff and that weekend there was like a big storm hmm. so we're there on the Thursday and then the Friday like the government are telling people don't go to your house all the trains all the travels off don't leave because there's a big fuck off storm coming to Cardiff so basically cancelled the gig <laughs> and we were just like hanging about and so me and Rosie Jones were, uh, were both on name drop comedian. there famous oh, yeah. comedian yeah. <laughs> but uh, me and Rosie and I'd only met her the night before and uh, we were both staying in the hotel and I was going to get a taxi over where that night so when it cancelled I was like oh you see the gig can cancel whatever and she's like aye do you want to go and get something to eat so aye brilliant so went and get something to eat and then went back to there's a bar next door to the hotel that the hotel had said was good and uh, this place called Porter's that apparently uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda used mm. to go quite a lot when uh, he was a student in Cardiff apparently of Hamilton oh. fame mm. of Hamilton fame and in, Cardiff fame because that's the what he does as well that's it but, um, um, <laughs> but basically <laughs> big musicals guy that's like a really huge. niche reference here Hamilton <laughs> and Lin-Manuel the, the, the only th reason how I knew his name in the first place was through a college humour video wow <laughs> well it just shows you <laughs> that these viral videos they're not only funny but they can educate as well exactly. and I think that's true of yours exactly. as well exactly <laughs> <laughs> anyway so me and Rosie go into this place Porter's right and we're like and it was like in a band setting up and then uh, somebody came up and said to us oh do you know what this night is I'm like no nah. and it's called Bandy Oki and it was so basically there's a live band there they do that at the fringe sometimes don't they well they do Massey Oki okay, oh, which right. is a different thing um, cause they what's that like masses of people I think they just are a band and they just have the lyrics on screen and, and oh, the, the crowd, crowd sing, sing. Right. but Bandy Oki okay is it's like a live band and then they, they've just got the usual sheet of, of songs that you can pick from to sing but if you want to sing a song you can go up and you're with singing a song with a fucking that live band. Class. Like, class, when are you ever yeah. going to get that chance? It's actually really good. And by the way, see, it's honestly a cracking idea for a wedding. Like, mm, see, instead yeah. of getting up, like, see if you got them as a band and then everybody can go up and have a laugh. It'd be great mm -hmm. fun, I think. Yeah. But anyway, so obviously, I'm thinking, oh, I'd maybe do Angels, right, for a laugh. And then I thought, when's the next time I'm going to be able to sing with a band behind me, right? <laughs> I'm going to do it. My fave, Oasis, don't look back in anger. I'm going up there. Full fucking Liam Gallagher laugh with the fucking mic. Hands, hands behind, behind my back. back. I generally do have hands behind my back and I've got, I've got a video of it, actually. And, uh, Forgetting well, that that's one that Noel sings, of course. But, uh, <laughs> well, exactly. I fucked his again. <laughs> 100% but, not that uh, much of a fan no no no, no, no. which ones what did you get no I don't know uh, but no anyway so I went up and I was like it was fucking class and the whole night was a pure buzz everybody's going up everybody's pu like it was not like a mosh pit but like everybody's right at the front jumping about dancing and like it was great and I felt like I was proper you know raising the roof we don't like it's still living anger. It's, it's a, a fucking crowd pleaser crowd pleasing karaoke songs I mean that's yeah. more like my stand up act you know what I mean fucking <laughs> accessible every kind of get this joke man fucking <laughs> let's do it <laughs> but anyway so I done the don't look back and I got it was pure class I really loved it but then afterwards people were coming up and they're like ah, oh you're a great singer and all that stuff and I'm like ah, <laughs> I'm fucking not right I was like listen maybe I've got a bit of stage presence you know I do my stand -up. <laughs> but I was like there's no way and then somebody sent me a video of me doing it and uh, it's fucking shit. <laughs> so you say, fucking hell, I was class. <laughs> I, I mean, I listen, uh, the performance was quite good. I was quite happy with that, but uh, I'm not going to say It's more than half the battle. Oh, yeah. What's yours, Steve? I could see you doing My Way or something like that. Or 
Steve no, no, loves a gambler. fucking crooner, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, one of no. those ties undone. I like. <laughs> I do like. Uh, what is it? Uh, T- Ernie Tennessee Ford or something. Uh, Sixteen tons. What do you get? I like that Literally one. Literally, sounds like a song your granddad made. Up. I've never. <laughs> yeah, it was one no, that one had lyrics. Your granddad at band, band okay. Sorry, lads. I don't want to do this. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> do you know the French toast number? French toast. <laughs> uh, no, I like doing raps. Right. So I like doing. If it's a duet, I'll always I like a bit of New York State of Mind, uh-huh. Jay Z and Alicia Keys. I need someone who mm. can hit the high notes. So you'll do I'll the verses. I'll do the Jay Z parts. I'll do the verses. Oh my God, they'll do the singing. So it always goes down a, a treat. Do you have any videos of this? <laughs> no, um, but next time because I've I've done it a couple of times. I've done it with Sophie Rogers, who we know. Yeah, she's got a great voice. She's a singer. That's her job. Absolutely. She done the fucking. The, the Alicia Key bit smashing it and I'm rapping. We've done it like work this night out and stuff like that. Uh, We've done it at like, there was after But the... did you change the words to Clyde Bank? <laughs> <laughs> Country jungle where dreams are made up. <laughs> We've done it at the, not me and Sophie, but me and someone else done it at the Glasgow Comedy Festival end of fucking yeah, the end part festival of thing. Yeah. We went to the uh, it was like the casino and it had a wee karaoke room in it sure. I'd done it there with someone but uh, out with rap I like a um, bit of pulp maybe mm. oh, I pulp. Common, I people. Common People Common mm. People mm. that's good interesting yeah. absolutely barking it oh yeah yeah, yeah. but that's one because it's kind of, you're speaking those yeah. lyrics well like Common yeah, People yeah, you're kind yeah. of speaking it and you so can you just still, you still don't like singing then basically it's always talk <laughs> or rap doing talk, mumble yeah. rap like mumble L, rap L sweatshirt <laughs> <laughs> Am I right in thinking, did you, do, did you ever do a rap in school or anything like that? Mm. Did you like, rap performance? That very much feels like you would have. Because I'll tell you what I did actually once. Did you? Me and two of my mates, I'm pretty sure in like, I can't remember what year it'd be, maybe only like second year or something. And I'm pretty sure we went up and done like, Lose Yourself or oh, yeah. or That's Without Me or something. That's quite fast. We'd, yeah, we'd, we'd done an Eminem song. At like the, whatever the talent show was, shit like that where you think you know Eminem lyrics and then yeah. it comes at you. You and quickly you, you realise <laughs> after Mum's spaghetti it goes downhill <laughs> very fast. And in your head you always think you know you're going to be this amazing. Like I think it would just be absolute cringe. Yeah, <laughs> the amount of times place. you used to go to the garage on a Thursday and they'd have that wee karaoke bit downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone like every four songs was lose yourself, and it was just <laughs> some fucking prick student who thought they could rap yeah, and yeah. Mur- absolutely murdering it, horrible. Absolutely. And I would go up yeah, with Jay Z and smash it. But I, I, some actually one a good one that I done, uh, and because I always knew the lyrics to it was Jamie T. Sheila. Mm. and that's like a rap but it was it's quite quick and cause it's like a sort of english accent you can kind of get away with a few yeah. things that's a that's a nice one to do did if it's yeah. a student crowd did you see eminem when he was at tea in the park yes my favorite one of my favorite hello edinburgh yeah that was my favorite thing for it because then there's a cunt behind me went it's fucking glasgow that mate. exact thing happened to me really Alright, so we're in, and obviously they hang just stand next to each other. We We must have honestly, (laughs) me and Steve like probably crossed paths so many times without knowing each other in our youth. Because that literally, because I always say that because it's like, I, Eminem comes out and goes, hello Edinburgh. And then the guy goes like, this is Glasgow mate. And like basically the both of them have made the same mistake Uh, where they don't realise that they're not still in the place they've just travelled from. (laughs) This guy's got on a bus for fucking Glasgow Central all the way to fucking Balado in Perth. (laughs) Eminem's getting a fucking taxi for Edinburgh Airport and they both are saying the places that (laughs) that they've came for. Not realising that both of them are fucking rang. But that is such a classic funny thing. that happened to me? I had a guy behind me saying it's fucking Glasgow, you prick. I can only imagine... I was that the a guy. few people done that. <laughs> a few different people probably said the exact same thing. That's just fucking glad because like you no know, fucking people in Glasgow like it's like yeah. anything that's no literally on the Royal Mile. Aye. Outside, like you know, <laughs> if you're not in the heart of Edinburgh, you Scotland's Glasgow. Glasgow. Yeah. It's Glasgow. But people make Glasgow as well. It's yeah. important to say. 
You hate that phrase, and <laughs> Bilardo, <laughs> and well, you'll make it fucking worse. <laughs> see, uh, see, you're talking about common people. Mind me, because I was actually uh, down for the first time ever. I was in Cambridge uh, last mm-hmm. week. Never been. It's, you know, it's really nice actually, but it's quite a fucking mad place, right? Because yeah. obviously, big uni. Big big uni, uni town. It's a uni town, but it just feels like a really small kind of village. Yeah. And it's like a sort of place. It's almost like feels like a fake place where all mm. these like posh cunts go. You know, obviously in these years, you know, after high school when they're in uni, it, to like prepare them just for kind of normalish life, but really to prepare them for being the fucking prime minister or yeah. the chancellor or some mm. shit. And you can really just see, you know, the privilege that they don't even realise they've got, and just the people there, and you can just see how that place breeds. You Boris know, yeah, Boris. Not, I didn't know if Boris went to fucking o- Oxford or Cambridge or whatever, but I'm, I, sh- I assume Oxford's the same. Must have been one of them, surely. Yeah. yeah. They know good. He Oxford grew up in like New York or some shit, did he not? Are they? He's American. Were you gigging in Cambridge? No, so I was in Nottingham and then I went to Cambridge it was an hour or so away. Right. Um, and just spent the day there basically, but it was it was cool, but it was funny because I uh, the place is beautiful and stuff like that. We wanted to go and see about the college and stuff, but we're all fucking shot on the Monday. But we're in the pub. And it was such a... The conversation overheard was so cliched that it was just like... It was literally just like a couple of wee guys talking about where they're going in their gap yard, you know? And it's like, yeah, I'm going to Turk, Turkmenistan and uh, Kurdistan, like, which is, you know, Kurdistan, to be fair. Like, it's not officially got its own country, so it's fair enough for them, but... Calling it Kurdistan, that. fucking <laughs> the Kurds, shout out. But... <laughs> uh, Fuck, I was like, I'm going to Kurdistan and Turkmenistan and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And just, like, it was that thing CMB was actually talking about last week's podcast about how it's, like, going on holiday to have a shite time than you would have here. But I just, the thing just struck me, it's like, God, these people are so privileged that they do need to, like, go and see real life, Mm. you know, on these mad, you know, holidays where they go to these, you know, places that their fucking forefathers probably fucking (laughs) invaded (laughs) and plundered. But then I just thought, it's like, man, you, you literally could drive for, like, an hour or something and you could find somewhere where you'd get a fucking shock never mind going all the way <laughs> yeah. Kurdistan or whatever yeah, you know fucking Stockton or something lads. aye because it's Come just Glasgow cause you, Balado. no exactly and I, you're just thinking like fucking hell man but it's just one of, I mean it was so lovely and nice but you just go almost everybody I've seen there looked like a fucking wank <laughs> 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 when I was in Nottingham actually I was watching uh, Glastonbury with Paul McCartney Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, you, I believe, are talking about Maca earlier. I don't. I so I'm a guy who's doesn't know things <laughs> a lot. Another great sketch, guy who doesn't know. things I don't know like anything. Well, that was the f- I thought it was so funny about you were putting all these things up. Guy who's never heard of this, and then we were out and you had literally <laughs> never heard of Woodstock. fucking Woodstock. <laughs> it's something you've heard of, but it's not. What I don't know what it is. Do you know what I mean? What you just that? thought it was a stock of woods. Ah, it's just a plank. But the most famous music festival ever. Why? Does it got Hendrix and all that? Was it? Hendrix yeah, and all that. Sixties. It was. You know. It was. I don't Summer give a love. Fuck. It's not as good as Balado. <laughs> M&M. This is Glasgow, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Woodstock. <laughs> <laughs> we literally got a plane in that. <laughs> Fucking Glasgow, man. <laughs> yeah, I, so I haven't heard of a lot of things. Guy who's never heard of things, that's me. Mm-hmm. Um, I hadn't heard the conspiracy. I quite like conspiracy theories. I think they're funny. I don't believe in a lot of them, but yeah. I think they are funny. I'd only recently just heard of this one that's been out since like the seventies, mm-hmm. which blew my mind. That uh, the conspiracy that Paul McCartney isn't actually Paul McCartney. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a guy posted on Facebook. He was like, "Well, clearly," and it was one of these people who pure anti-COVID, anti-lockdown, mm-hmm. sure. COVID denier. Holocaust it's weird how they all believe in all the conspiracies, isn't it? It's Aye. like it comes as a full package deal these days. It's like, like everything that they must be experience is like, this isn't fucking real, what the fuck? That is my thing, because right? sometimes I listen to conspiracy podcasts and stuff like that, and sometimes I think to myself, like, when they go on in this one and this one and this one, I go, right, hang on, is there anything that's not a conspiracy? Yeah. Like, Aye. is there anything that just randomly happens for no reason? Is yeah. that, does Literally that ever happen? nothing is as it seems. No, is yeah. every, everything was the CIA. You tell me, everything <laughs> was the CIA. A lot of things were. But, the yeah. why, oh, like, what's that, that mentality? Is that just because their life's shite and it's not the way they want it to be? So it must be something else that has caused us to be shite? 
I think that I think there's a bit of that for yeah. sure. I, I think people just want to make connections and people want to make sense of the world. So it's like a lot of the time I think this is why people try and figure out who killed Tupac or Biggie or whatever, because basically if you just go, Well, he bar like with Tupac, it's like, well, if he barred some cunt at the MGM Grand after that Mike Tyson fight and then they went and shot him, it seems like a bit of a waste of, you know, his lot like his music and his legacy and all that sort of stuff. So but if you can go, Oh well it was all a conspiracy, blah blah blah, it sort of creates a, a meaning mm-hmm. yeah. to life rather than just the randomness of like, well this happened and then this fucking happened and then yeah. this guy's deed. And I think that's the way with a lot of conspiracies. So do you think the original conspiracy was like religion and fucking Ooh. God and stuff like that? Do you know? Because people are just trying to make Steve's sense. Steve's electric. Come, Come on, on guys. Yeah. This is the Ricky Gervais podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I just go back to the Paul McCartney one first? Because yeah. I remember finding out about that like years ago, but I thought it was like a, I thought it was like a parody of conspiracy theories. Yeah, I Cause... think it maybe was, and then now people believe it or something. Is it not to do with on Abbey Road? He's not wearing shoes. That's one of the clues that they've yeah. given people. That uh, there's there's like lyrics and stuff that is like, oh, that's not Paul. That's and then they give this name. I can't remember, but it's a name that they use quite a, in a couple mm. of songs. Then there was the fact on Abbey Road he was walking barefoot, yeah. and the legs were like the opposite way or something like that. Right, or he was like. I was something like that, but I mean, the barefoot thing's definitely a thing. Like, they all had their legs like that, but he had them like that, and it was, like, meant to... To show that he's dead. To yeah. show that but he's dead. But John Lennon That's wearing a fucking... Being dead. John Lennon's so wearing a fucking <laughs> white suit on the Abbey Road cover. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think if you're a deed, that's more appropriate attire. Yeah. yeah. But, and he has deed then, I suppose. But, uh, allegedly. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I just thought it was... I just think that's such a stupid one, and, like, I yeah. guess I was starting in the 70s and probably was maybe started yeah. as a joke or something, and then people latched on it and but this is the thing now and there's actually that adam curtis documentary that they talk about this a bit like yeah if you start a conspiracy like as a parody it can take on a life of its own and then actually people can believe it i think like that's kind of what happened with the flat air stuff as well to be honest like mm. i think people probably just done it as a wind up and then people go no but what if it is flat do you know what i mean uh, yeah, yeah. Do you want, i think we should start one see if we can get one cooking get one going get a conspiracy uh, going do you want to i've always had this thought of uh, Nando's Pyrenees <laughs> is so much spicier in the bottles in the shops than it is in the, the restaurant. restaurant. And I don't know why. I think... This it's... is going to blow the lid off mm. of those Nando's bottles. Yeah, yeah, big time. We, <laughs> we you, should think of a reason. reason well, that's what we should workshop a reason for that. So what spicier saw the one in the shop and the one in the shop? The one in the shop. I think it's to, to drive sales in the restaurant because that's people... That's thought, yeah. yeah. Drive sales If you can get there. it exactly the same at home, why would you bother going to Nando's? But you exactly. pay more in Nando's. Exactly. There's probably some We're really boring Nando's. consumerist reason. It's like, yeah. you know, it has to be a certain spice to be yeah. allowed in fucking to supermarkets. It's a condiment uh, or some shit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Or they've added more. Do you like, mix it in with normal mayonnaise to just cool it down? I have done. Yeah. I have done because it is very hot. Mm. And it says mild on the bottle, but they fucking lie. They should say wild on the bottle. I mean, given your history with uh, the spicy foods community, Nando's yeah. will be fucking shit in it. I mean, I'm shocked sure you've not already got a viral video about this shit. <laughs> this is him just working up some new stuff. Yeah, this is the <laughs> guy who has never had Nando's sauce before. Or <laughs> just, all just like shop and food based <laughs> observations. Well, you should punch up and mm. who is up? Corporations. That's my conspiracy yeah. for you guys. Wait till the Nando's bootlickers come for you, though. Yeah, Nando. I do kind of think Big all their Nando. bottles of sauce basically just taste of lemon. I like lemon. I like lemon. Who doesn't? But I, I think the heat, all... the heat of the sauce goes medium, extra hot, blah, blah, blah. I don't think they're that spicy. Or... No. I don't think the spice varies that no, much. No, I don't think. I think like how we were racket. verging on, like, uncovering fucking 9-11. <laughs> 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 Pyrenees can't melt steel beams, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not that fucking hot. <laughs> Another one in the fucking restaurant, anyway. It's far too mild, it's too mild. Too mild. Do you want to know uh, my favourite conspiracy? Yes, please. Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder can see. Oh, that's great. That's what? a good one. That's great. Uh, there's loads of shit like, about this online. Is there? Like, Stevie Wonder can see better than he's letting on. It's like, people... <laughs> I'm not saying I believe this, I just think it's funny. But uh, people are convinced, unlike some people are convinced that, yeah, it's kind of like a marketing thing from back in the day of like, 
you know it's kind of like his usp is this blind guy but there's like i think there's like clips you can get where he's like you know a mic stand falls over and he like picks it up and shit like that or like well, that would stuff t- just making it look like he can see better so do you believe can. this i don't believe it but i think it's funny that would like put a new spin it. on the time that george w bush waved at him because maybe he just knew and he yeah, was yeah. like Aye. that was that like he's got all the papers he knows he yeah. was fucking letting on he's like oh shit I like, know oh, I'm stupid uh, it's no it'd be a fucking <laughs> hilarious bit if after about 80 years Stevie Wonder's just like psych <laughs> <laughs> do you think you would have to take that kind of secret to your grave or do you think you would like to put it in, like on your deathbed Kim's it would be so funny after he dies he's just like Jimmy Savile <laughs> yeah. Stevie Wonder could see fucking people getting rid of these statues and this. <laughs> so on his deathbed surrounded by loved ones going is that a white light I can see how would you know <laughs> <laughs> I've went a wee bit full circle on conspiracy theories I must say and I'm going to sound mental over this after all that shit earlier on about fucking you know how thoughts are powerful and shit but so I used to quite be interested in them like I remember eh, like I actually got into Tupac when I was younger because just one summer holidays I thought I'm going to look into this guy and see why does everybody say he's alive and like I'd done an investigation and I started listening to his music and I liked him you've done but, your own wee project in the I, yeah, summer, in summer, project. summer project but I used to watch that and I remember like seeing all the mad 9-11 conspiracy theories and all that sort of stuff in you know my youth and I, and then I you know as you grow older and, and again you get that point where you just go look there's not really that many conspiracies the Illuminati doesn't exist it's all kind of who owns everything's all quite out in the open it's just that like no one really cares and whatever and what you going to do about it um, so I, I, and I do think to a large extent that's the case there's no any real things going on I have kind of got into some like I've been as I said been listening to some podcasts and stuff and they do sort of sometimes go into certain things that the CIA or fucking MKUltra and that sort of stuff done and I think that is interesting and probably a wee bit underplayed how much that was a factor and they, there's a couple I've listened to about the JFK assassination, which does seem... The magical bullet theory. Yeah, I mean, Lee, do you know, Lee Harvey Oswald, right? I'm a went, smart guy. He went and lived in <laughs> Russia. <laughs> he went and defected to Russia, right? This is the middle of the Cold War. And then he comes back. They let him back in the country. He, there's just so much dodgy shit. The actual film, JFK, is actually quite good about it, although it is a bit mental and all. Um, but there's so many fucked up things about Lee Harvey Oswald. Obviously, you know, if you the fucking film... You know, it's the bullet that fucking blows off JFK's head. It's no coming from that fucking be behind him. Grassy no. It's going for grassy no. And uh, <laughs> and is that shit right? So I mean, it is interesting. But and what was it? A mad mobster killed Lee Harvey. And then, so Jack first? Ruby then killed um, Lee Harvey Oswald the next day. Then Jack Ruby right, obviously gets put in prison. They think that uh, Jack Ruby basically got kind of fucking MK Ultra and hypnot or whatever and they made him mental basically after that he couldn't so that he couldn't really testify and say what he really done. So there's hundreds of ma- there's hundreds of man shit about the JFK hang and I sort of think it's a bit pointless really getting into it, but it's quite interesting to listen What's to your sometimes. Personal theory, Mark? Well that my f- I, I think it was I, I had to think it was probably CIA and stuff like that. There's probably a number of people done it. My favourite thing about the JFK assassination though is <laughs> uh, We've all got, got one. one. <laughs> hey. Thanks. <laughs> is J so <laughs> George H. W. Bush, right? So George W. Bush's da, who was the president before Bill Clinton, um, and was Ronald Reagan's uh, vice president. Of course. So he worked for the CIA in the sixties, right? Yep. And it was he kind of denied at the time. He then became the head of the CIA, and he was meant to be like this clean pair of hands. But there's a lot of evidence that he worked for them in the early days, and he was in Dallas on the day JFK got assassinated. But when when, he's, when he was asked where were you when JFK got shot, he said, "I don't remember." You got to think of something better than that, bro. Everybody remembers where they were yeah. when he was shot. And I actually think him even saying that is like a pure like he's like. On the wind up, a joke and go, I mean, not on the wind, like, I don't remember where it was in that, that day that uh, fucking everyone remembers. Yeah. And I think, I think he was in on it, man. He was behind the he grass. He was in on it. I think he might have shot him. Do you think he, he pulled the trigger? <laughs> <laughs> it would be class if he did, like, <laughs> it's like I'm going to be president someday. Is that a widely sort of held conspiracy? It's a, like, it's a well, uh, hey, you know, it's a pretty well known thing. Like, there's, uh, there's a couple of uh, podcasts that have documented it quite a lot, like the, the George W. George H.W. Bush thing he was involved in a lot of shit be a pigs all this kind of stuff um, yeah he's a, he really because he was a mad nerd he was kind of like the he was like the American John Major 
Like they, uh, they yeah, look, yeah. they're basically the same dude, man. Just a mad geeky old He's guy. Shagging the Dwayne Curry as well. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Bush was, you know, <laughs> as Dwayne Curry. But um, so he seems like a man there, but I feel like in him, the sons of man's fault. Well, gotta be aware of the nerds. Yeah. What's the mad thing where it's like, oh, these two presidents had the same names? Lincoln and JFK. Aye, is so that? Was, so Lincoln and they was both sh- got shot. Lincoln was shot. I can't remember the thing about it, but Kennedy was shot in a Lincoln car. Yeah, that was it. And it was something like, there was something about the name of the theatre that Lincoln was assassinated in. This is the, the stuff the I JFK enjoy about. The JFK theatre. <laughs> is it John F. Kennedy? It's JFK moment. airport I got shot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's stuff like that. But no, I, I, you know, as I say, I think you go a bit mental. But I, th- I think loads of stuff just happens randomly. I do think there's some stuff that it's intelligence and all that doing it and I'll, like I've got kind of more into that in recent mm-hmm. times, but I also think if you fucking focus too much on that, you just become a mad psycho. And yeah. here's what it all comes down to: is as the queen of lizard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> here's what I think it all really comes down to: is see if you believe in all these conspiracies, and you get too much into the thinking of like, oh, you know, all of these historical events are are being dictated by you know. CIA and the government and the coups and blah 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 and the rest of it basically the difference is you then start thinking that you've got no control over the world yeah and it's like having an internal locus of control versus an external locus of control and listen probably the control we have over our lives is to a large extent limited but I think the belief that helps you is that you have control over your life and how what direction it takes and all that sort of stuff at least you know obviously it's like you can control what's in your control and it's like that fucking Alcoholics Anonymous thing into it. It's like, except the things I cannot change and all that shit. Mm. But I think if you get too into conspiracy stuff and you just go, oh, well, you know, everything's fucking, you know, it's, uh, everything's out of my control. I've got no, no say over everything. And that goes Chaos. with the economy and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, everything's fucked and I'm, you know, being persecuted and there's nothing I can do about it. And maybe there is nothing I can do about a lot of things, but I think it's worth just focusing your attention at least on the stuff you can control and work to change. Uh, otherwise, you'll just sit about talking about how fucking MK Ultra are fucking, you know, mind controlling cunts and fucking yeah. the Royals of Lizards and all the rest mm-hmm. of it. And you'll. Pyrenees is spicier and the bottle. Yes. And, and you'll probably stuff. end up just being a mad fucked up stoner that's never done anything <laughs> in your life. Yeah, but, uh, so uh, that's, you know, that's definitely a danger for me. So I try and just move away from that as well and, yeah. and focus on my own shit. Yeah. But it's interesting. He's yeah, listening. Is, Sometimes yeah. if you kind of get sleep at night, it's a good podcast to put on. <laughs> uh, that is funny because you get mad. If you ever go on TikTok, you get conspiracy TikTok. I feel like TikTok is the most dangerous place for anyone learning about anything. By the way, yeah. aye, yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> you get some mental ones like the Wayfair one. Have we spoke about that before? No. No, so you get the, the Wayfair conspiracy of Wayfair, the company, of like the that kind of came out about the same time as the Epstein stuff. I remember. Did it? Yeah. Maybe. I don't even know what the fuck this is. So it's basically um, Wayfair apparently are involved in human trafficking and yeah. child trafficking because you get certain items on their website, which is called like it's like a chest of drawers, but it's called like Sam, and then it's worth like ten thousand dollars or whatever, and it just looks like a normal chest of drawers. And then there's people going, look at this newspaper clip, and there's a wee bug called Sam that went missing like three weeks before this, and blah blah blah. That is yeah. fucking insane. Yeah. Could be real. Yeah. I like all what that kind I of think... stuff where it's like the the second letter of Sam is A. A equals one. <laughs> one is the number of books. They, you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. the fuck it is. I it's love that weird crazy connection. shit. Yeah. yeah. And because I remember when I was younger and I'd, like, you'd get into all the Illuminati stuff and all that and it'd always be like, Jay-Z is in the Illuminati and the, the triangle means fucking Rockefeller and all that shit. Yeah. And you're like, there's what? a triangle on the dollar as well. I, so and you, like, oh, there's all these hidden clues, and you go, why would, why would they do this? Why <laughs> yeah. would, what is What's the point? What is in it yeah. for them? Why would, was... you'd want to keep it as secret as possible if it was a secret society, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And really, that just showed the psychosis of the person that was making the video, I believe, and that stuff, where they're looking for the triangles everywhere, and then suddenly they fucking see them and all that. And Kanye West got a fucking triangle fucking pyramid on his t shirt mm-hmm. and yeah. fucking 140, and you know, it's like, oh, they're all doing And it was the one that I always remember was like, whenever everybody would do the mad rock and roll hands gesture uh, you devil. know the devil horns and everybody was like oh that you know it shows you fucking hillary clinton's doing it and fucking beyonce <laughs> and you know britney spears or whatever and then everybody would like what well, that's what would convince yeah. them on oh, they they must be satanic but there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of uh, assumptions in that mainly one being 
the devil is real and uh, you can make a deal with <laughs> hell, him apparently hell of a swing yeah, yeah you can yeah. literally make a deal with him and that's it if the devil's listening i'll make a deal with you okay guys and now, now here's, our, <laughs> here's our new sponsor from the devil it's old del paso for me to guess <laughs> spicy as hell <laughs> That seems like a good point to move on to the philosophical question, I think. Yeah, philosophical. Should we do that? What one was it you wanted? What do you what fancy? was that last one again? The thing about fate or not? To what extent do you shape your own destiny and how much is down to fate? So, it's really whether... It's not a million miles from what we're talking about. Yeah, is the future predetermined? Or, you know, again, I suppose it goes yeah. back to literally the fucking rant. I was just saying about the locus of control and all that shit. I guess I'd, I don't believe that it's predetermined at all. But I do believe it's largely chaos. And luck, Aye. and you know, circumstance. Absolutely, yeah. I think that see, even if the universe was all determined already, like one, there's no way of us knowing about this, and two, um, like you know, you, you, you couldn't do anything about it anyway. So I feel like you've, even if it is, you've got to act like it isn't. It? Mm-hmm. You know, you've got to act like you yeah. have a control. It's like just what I was fucking literally just saying about. Yeah. You know, about whether, you know, you can really change that much in your life or no. There's a lot of stuff that's out of your control. Fucking the economy, fucking an asteroid hitting the earth, whatever the fuck it is, global warming. But you can fucking, you know, mm-hmm. just, your attitude is really what dictates it. But, control the controllables. Absolutely. But there may, be an, there may be an argument to say that fucking everything is all predetermined, that's all happens and fucking whatever, I don't know. Aye. Uh, because, like, it's like saying like say someone wanted to be a millionaire or whatever and they're like well if it's going to if it's meant to be it'll be so i'll just sit here and do nothing but then it's like the people who are millionaires work for it and work yeah. hard and that would have been in their journey anyway that they had to work hard to get there that would be that would have been predetermined yeah that they're working hard so it's like you still need to fucking you kind of just sit back like you said mm-hmm. and do nothing because like that that won't get anything no you know Oh, absolutely. Fate's a lot of shit, really, isn't it? I think is the is that the is that the take home? Um, me, well, maybe. I would say I wouldn't no, call though. it fate. I wouldn't again, call I'm... it fate, but it's. I think that's maybe. Like you were talking about thoughts and shit like that. I don't know. Or something maybe. But it's so much of it's down to where you're born. If you're born in a first world country, oh, to rich yeah. parents, whatever, you're probably gonna well, that, do all right. Is that fate? Uh, or is that just luck, chaos? Yeah, I'd call that more luck and chaos than fate. But maybe we're just maybe it's just no, semantics. It's just, I don't yeah. Know. Exactly. Here, here's my thing about it is like I think the world is fucking chaos and all that sort of stuff. And like, but basically, you need to traverse your way through it. And like, see, particularly if you've got a plan or you're there's something you're working towards or something like that. I think the universe or whatever it is has an interesting way of of managing to help your course along. And like, there's a good phrase I heard years ago. And it was like, uh, it says the universe doesn't give you what you want; it gives you what you need. And I think sometimes if you're on a path towards something, like, in particular, like, you know, you can get, you can have these steps on a journey, and sometimes it's a fucking setback, but then it leads you in a direction mm-hmm. that ends up getting you the place you wanted to go in the first place. Yeah. And you look back and you're grateful for the things that you wanted that didn't work out and all these type of things. And I'm a big believer in that type of thing. And, and look, hundreds of mad things happen for fucking no reason, and bad things happen to good people and all the rest of it. But I do think particularly when you've got a goal in mind and you're wanting towards something and again probably when you put your you, you know you put your mind towards something the universe is an interesting way of sort of shaping round t- to your desires a wee bit yeah occasionally and then sometimes shit just doesn't work just out fuck but yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think yeah like what you said earlier the alcoholics anonymous thing is like really key i think Cause it's mm-hmm. not they say it in that and it's got like a vaguely religious connotation right yeah yeah, yeah. But, that's basically the cornerstone of like zen and mindfulness of that. Absolutely. Like just surrender to what you can't control, but try and change what you can. Aye. Well, a lot of the mad shit that I've spoke about in today's like, it's fair, I think, called the psychology <laughs> imagine, of it. Imagine a TED talk wrapping up. So a lot of the mad <laughs> shit I've come out with today. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fair, I think, I like called the psychology of achievement by this guy called Brian Tracy. Your ma actually has the original like cassette tapes in the uh, house and all that. That's right, yeah. But it's really good. I've got it in my... And my phone and uh, I listened to it a million times but he talks about a lot of that stuff is super conscious and all that in it um, but he was saying you can only really have as much happiness as you feel like you've got control of your life 
and you can only have as much control as what you take responsibility for. So really, the more responsibility you try and take for your own life, the happier you'll be. Yeah. Um, and I think there's really something to that, you know. Mm. Um, and again, obviously, the stuff that, like... Because um, if you don't, that's where bitterness comes from. That's where bitterness comes from. And listen, you know, personal responsibility is a very loaded term when it comes to politics and stuff, because that's like what you know, like, conservatives will go, oh, well, take your personal responsibility, and so, fuck you, you're not getting... Benefits. You're not shit. getting benefits, so you're not getting a helping hand if you're fucked or whatever, because we don't care about you. So, I, I, I think, my whole thing is, like, you should actually take personal responsibility as a person. I just don't think that's a good way for a government to act. No. To, like, or, like, when you. corporations are, like, offloading climate change onto you, washing out fucking yoghurt pots. No, 100%, yeah. I, that's, like, you know, I, that's a fucking mugs game that we yeah. think we're all going to change it by changing it to plastic straws or whatever when fucking they're all still burning fossil fuels. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, obviously, every little helps, I suppose, but... Um, <laughs> Which is our sponsor this week from Sainsbury's. <laughs> well, that was Tesco, actually. Yeah. Oh, was it? That's every little helps. Guy who doesn't know supermarkets. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, for somebody that spends so much time in shops and fucking talking about food, you don't even <laughs> fucking supermarkets. We I've go got... to Tesco every single time we record this, we go to Tesco. Is it... Ev- no, is Every it? little helps is What's Tesco. Sainsbury's in? Taste of Difference or Taste something? Taste of Difference is the range. That's the name of the range, yeah. Do they say they have a is. byline? I don't really know. Aye. Really as does ones with, where they pat their arse. What's, beep, beep. What as the price. That's as the price. Yeah. Morrison's doesn't really have one, does it? No, I can't remember. Not that famous. I like yeah. Morrison's though. Morrison's meat. i got no beef for Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that was the end of the podcast. Steve, Steve's got beef for Morrison's. He says he gets his meat from there. Yeah, I, yeah, I get nice, beef from Morrison. Nice. Uh, that's good beef. <laughs> I tell you. And you've got no beef with them. Yeah, no beef. Get their beef. It's all beef. This is a good Jerry Seinfeld bit we're writing here. <laughs> I got beef from them, but I don't have beef with them. You know? What is the deal with the word beef? <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so, nah, nothing's predetermined. Who, who, who the fuck knows? Go and live your life. Just yeah. enjoy it. But, yeah, don't be a cunt. Don't be a cunt. Is the main thing. Because I think that could sometimes be like, oh, well, if nothing's... If it means nothing, then we could just go and kill people. But nihilism doesn't always have to be everything's shit and and so let's kill people. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's like, well, nothing really matters, so let's fuck it. Just have a laugh. Be a good person or whatever. What we were saying the other week. You've just got to have chill. I have a bit of chill about you. (laughs) Stop, stop, re- just relax. Yeah. Just relax. Chill out, man. It's no. just videos. It's just dumb videos. Stop messaging me. <laughs> Horrible things. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some laugh. It's just yeah. some laugh. Life yes. is some laugh. Exactly. exactly. Live, laugh. Some. <laughs> some. <laughs> this um, is basically my friend show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that probably takes us to time we can wrap up. Um, once again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. We mm-hmm. are getting dangerously close now to the Edinburgh Festival this year, which all three of us have shows at. Yes. Yes. I've got one. Do As me? do I. Steve has got one. I would want me to plug it. Yes, please. It's at Monkey Barrel, Carnivore 1, one twenty-five in the afternoon for 45 minutes for 10 days from the 4th of August to the 14th. If you've been enjoying Steve's uh, online sketches, he will be doing the sketches live. He's not really doing stand-up. It's more of a sketch show. Sketch and characters. I'm not doing stand-up. So it's going to be different to these fucking cunts over here. Go see the sketch <laughs> version of the old El Paso thing that you've seen online that used to be stand-up before it's turned into a book. I'm not doing that bit. <laughs> right, okay. I'm not doing that bit. So in a work in progress you, for a show next of- year. Yes. Brand spanking you never seen before sketches? No, I wouldn't say that. I'm gonna mm. there's gonna Split be some, the there's gonna be some favourites in there, but I'm I'm not doing old El Paso because they've contacted me and they said if you ever say Cease this again <laughs> you're you're a dead man. If you ever say the words feet, I can't if, I'll, I'll if I wake up dead tomorrow morning, you know what you know why guys. Wake up with a wee head of spicy dust in my fucking head. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I might do Craig David, might do that, might do WH Smith, but I'm not doing things. Yeah, fucking narcissist. You'd be lucky for <laughs> anyone to shag you. Never mind on a Tuesday and the Wednesday. Imagine getting that verbatim as a heckle as you did. <laughs> I know it was you, you cunt. <laughs> Try me. <laughs>
And Stuart, where are you? Uh, I'm at Monkey Barrel at Carnivore 2. I'm doing an hour of stand-up, my second show. It's called Stuart mm-hmm. McPherson and the Peach, and it's on at 4.55 um, for an hour. Capiche? Five, the Peach, Capiche? Capiche? Um, you, can, you can have that one. <laughs> um, yeah, it's on at 4.55 every day from the 1st to the 28th of August, <laughs> apart from the 15th. Cheap tickets, it's going to be fun. Come how, much, how much we're talking seven. five or seven at the weekend nice good nice. price good price i am also in the same venue carnivore through monkey barrel comedy as you can see on these lovely mugs friends that we've got the show. here friends of the show yeah um, i'm on at 5 25 every day from the third till the 28th except the 17th and uh, yeah tickets are all online the link to all of our shows is available in the bio for the podcast itself uh, you can find us at some laugh pod on instagram Twitter and TikTok, which we're taking off. A couple of the clips are doing pretty well nice. on there now. You can also email us if you'd like to email us about it in uh, pod at gmail.com. And just yeah. don't do it at 2.30 a.m. after like 100 drinks. Yeah, yeah. please. And don't if, direct it to Try and make inbox. it make some sense. Yeah. If you believe we're narcissists, keep that to yourself. We fucking know already, okay? <laughs> yeah. We're doing this. So nothing closeted stuff. about doing a YouTube fucking channel. Absolutely <laughs> not. Although, if you'd like to shag any of us on a Tuesday or Wednesday, do get in touch. <laughs> 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 uh, That's the subtext. <laughs> yes. And uh, again, we obviously are on YouTube. If you're just listening to this, uh, you can like and subscribe there. Please do. And f- people have been giving us some nice five star reviews on apple Podcasts and on spotify please continue to do so and we really do appreciate the the comments alongside some of the apple reviews have been yeah, very nice thank yeah, you we Lovely. should start taking some uh, listeners questions and stuff like that as well we'd absolutely love yeah. to take some listeners questions maybe we'll do a wee thing on instagram or something about that and uh, yeah more exciting stuff to come more guests all that sort of stuff um, we'll continue doing the show through the fringe I believe uh, we'll find a, where there's a will there's a way we'll get through yeah, that yeah, and uh, and yeah we've got many more exciting things down the pipeline but listen guys thanks very much for tuning in and we will speak to you very soon see you later see you